Hello, Professor Tucker. This is Mr. Uh, I'm Stephen Bornheimer, and this is my uh, inquiry project presentation. Uh, just so you know, this presentation is based on the concept of the liver, its function, uh, what's, what are some of the things it can do, and then also some of the uh, problems uh, the liver can experience. Okay, and this, this presentation, this project, is geared towards a lower high school range student, let's say a biology student, uh, ninth grader, uh, that kind of age. It could also be used in the upper grade school levels, maybe 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, it's not meant to be super complicated, but a basic understanding of a chemical equation would be ideal, as well as the function of enzymes and things of that nature. So that's what, the, that's what this project is geared towards. Now, uh, so uh, one of the things that I'm going to be uh, kind of doing here is I'm going to bring up my, I'm going to bring up my, and you should hopefully be able to see the liver presentation that I have up on the screen. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and just start working through that presentation here. So I'm going to go ahead and present it. Okay, this is the liver, and uh, it's basically a, just an introduction to this particular organ um, by me, Stephen Bornheimer. Okay, and here we go. Here is a general diagram of the liver. Okay, the liver is broken up into a left lobe and a right lobe. And behind or attached to the liver would be the, the gallbladder, which is a separate organ. Okay, and uh, so the liver is kind of here, and it's a rather large um, pinkish organ. If you can kind of see in the diagram over here on the left, that it is near the stomach and sits above the intestinal tract, the GI tract. Uh, so yeah, so the liver is, is rather large. It's also made of smooth tissue, which should be rosy and pinkish in color. Okay, what is the liver? The liver is an organ that performs many tasks for digestion and it regulates the chemical levels of the blood. We see here the different lobes of the liver, the bile duct, the gallbladder, the stomach, and then you know the pancreas as well. This all right in here um, helps in the aid of digestion and it's all located where it is so that it can uh, essentially help the small intestine uh, with digestion. Okay, now, one of the most amazing facts about the liver is that it's about the size of a regular football and can weigh up to three pounds. Uh, so it is rather, it is very large. If you think of a five pound bag of sugar, well, three fifths of that is, it could be about as big as a liver. So it is a rather large organ in our body. Now, it produces, the liver is, can be an incredibly important uh, organ in our body. And we see that the liver is very important by looking at the, the bilary system or the, bil the bilary system. Uh, the liver produces something which is called bile. And that bile it can be stored in the gallbladder. And what it does is it is secreted into the small intestine via the bile, the small duct here, the common bile duct. And when it gets into the small intestine, it aids in the digestion of fats. It breaks down uh, large fatty um, products into just basic lipid structures so that our body can process, handle, store, or if we need to, extract energy from those fats. Okay, so that is one of the major functions of the liver. It's one reason it is very important for us. Without it, without the production of bio, we would probably not be able to digest fats. And fats are a rather large, uh, uh, an important part of our, our meal, important part of our metabolism, a very important part of our, our functionality. Uh, fats store a lot of energy, and we harness that energy uh, to function. Okay, the liver also acts like a filter, and this is one of the things that a lot of people uh, know about the liver. Uh, it cleans the blood in a way, not like the kidneys do, but essentially more so it regulates the toxins that can be harmful to our bodies. At any given time, the liver is processing about 13% of the body's blood. Considering how much blood is in our bodies, 13% is a significant amount, hence the reason that it's kind of a rosy red color. It is full of blood. 
Okay, now here is just kind of a, a breakdown of the different uh, functions of the liver. Obviously, I've talked about a couple of them with the creation of bile. It breaks down fats and small intestine digestional tract. It also produces proteins and cholesterol for a variety of purposes, including proteins used in blood plasma, which is very important. Okay, it converts glucose into glycogen for storage. It processes hemoglobin and stores iron, which is also a very important part of our body. It converts ammonia into urea, and that's, again, one of those things where it, convert, it kind of breaks down harmful chemicals for our body. Okay, it clears the blood of drugs and other poisons. And lastly, the liver helps regulate blood clotting. Now, these are not the only functions of the liver. The liver is responsible for over 500 known functions which means that it is an incredibly important asset to our bodies. Um, we could not live without the liver. It is just an incredibly important organ. You know, it's like sometimes we can live without the appendix or we can live without a single kidney or, or you know, we can do without, you know, certain limbs even. We cannot live without, we cannot function properly and therefore live without a liver. Okay, now, uh, it's sorry that this is a little blurry. Um, the liver and 500 vital functions and basic ones are kind of outlined here in this chart. Uh, immunity against infection it produces proteins and cholesterol. It excretes waste, waste via bile. It regulates blood clotting, clears the blood of drugs, chemicals, and alcohol, converts excess glucose into starch for storage, and creates bile for fat digestion. These are just the main ones and some of which were listed on the previous slide. Okay, now one of the, the main points of this presentation that I, and that will also lead to my, my, uh, my presentation or my lab, so to speak, my inquiry activity, is the function of enzymes in the liver. Okay, to facilitate its function, the liver uses enzymes, which are proteins that carry out chemical reactions and oftentimes act as catalysts in the process. So basically there are certain enzymes in the liver that help break down chemicals and then turn those chemicals into products which are less harmful so that the body can either use them or excrete them. The liver uses enzymes to help break down substances that would otherwise be harmful or that are just more useful in a different form. Okay, So one of the enzymes found in the liver is catalase. And actually, it's not just found in the liver. Catalase is a very prominent enzyme found in most organic life. It facilitates the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. And we can see here in the chemical reaction that if we, ha if we had uh, two uh, H2O, uh, or two H2O2, so hydrogen peroxide on the left, you would end up with two H2O, so two water molecules, and an oxygen molecule on the right. And this is just, this is essentially a decomposition re reaction where we're taking one reactant, we're breaking it down into two products. Okay, this is a very basic uh, reaction. Okay, uh, decomposition of hydrogen peroxide oftentimes produces bubbles because the water stays in liquid form, but the oxygen is then um, released as a gas, and so we see that the oxygen kind of uh, bubbles out of the, the liquid solution as a gas. Okay, and we're going to look at that further here in just a moment. Then there's alcohol dehydrogenase. One of the better known functions of the liver is that it breaks down alcohol. We know that one of the, the primary reasons that the liver is abused in human beings is oftentimes with those who suffer from alcoholism, who drink too much alcohol. The liver does this by using an enzyme known as alcohol dehydrogenase. And what it does is it essentially takes up alcohol um, and it breaks it down into more useful products. Sometimes in doing that a lot, it can cause damage to the liver. You can see below that the enzyme takes the alcohol, in this case ethanol, which we see over here on the left, the CH3CCH2OH, and removes two hydrogens. Okay, one combines with NAD positive. Okay, and we, we know that NAD positive is a very important uh, molecule uh, when we're looking at electron transport chains and uh, like the Krebs and Calvin cycles. Okay, NAD positive is very, very important essentially in producing ATP and it's, it's one of the energy molecules of, of our body. So one combines with NAD positive and the other is released as a single hydrogen ion, H positive, over here. So we see essentially the CH3 stays the same, the C, we lose an H here, we lose the H on the end. 
and that's what happens here. And then NAD positive combines with an H, and the other H is released as a hydrogen ion. Okay, but that doesn't stop there. Okay, then we have another enzyme uh, where essentially the CH3CHO from the previous reaction breaks down further in the following reaction, where essentially what happens is, is that it releases yet more uh, hydrogen. We see one of the hydrogens goes with NAD positive again. All right, this, and then we, and with CO, this one becomes acetyl-CoA, NADH, and then another hydrogen is released. Well, if we take and look at the combined uh, reactions here, we see that the output is two oxygens. Okay, I'm kind of going back here. Two oxygens here, so an oxygen molecule, and then two hydrogens. A hydrogen here and an additional hydrogen here. With an abundance of hydrogen and oxygen present, you have, a perfect you have the perfect ingredients for essentially a clean combustion reaction. We have hydrogen, which will essentially, if provided with some form of heat, combust with the oxygen. Okay? So ultimately, this, this activity that I'm going to have my students do explores these three equations. Uh, you looking at the enzymes and how they facilitate the breaking down of not only hydrogen peroxide to get that oxygen, but also alcohol in two reactions to get the hydrogen. And then we look at, you know, essentially, you know, a before and after of what these two things before they are essentially separated and how they're somewhat inert. The alcohol is not, but when mixed with the hydrogen peroxide, it, it can be. And then what happens when we apply it to the liver and the liver separates it out so that it's producing hydrogen and oxygen gas and how volatile that can be. Okay, and so we're going to kind of watch a video of this, of this experiment. Uh, and this is kind of where I got my inspiration for this particular presentation. Okay, I thought that it was really good. Uh, and so I'm kind of kind of narrate it here as we watch it. Okay, it's called the exploding liver. It's really quite fascinating. You can see the credit should go to Kevin Cahill. Okay. He's adding essentially ethanol to hydrogen peroxide. Okay, nothing's happening. Now he's going to add some blood. And what the blood's going to do is the blood has catalase. So essentially it's going to the catalase is going to start to break down the hydrogen peroxide. And we see that that's happening here. What we see bubbling up on the surface is actually just oxygen bubbles. Okay, so now he's adding some liver to the, to the uh, mixture. And what you can't see is that there's actually bubbles that are being produced in that particular experiment. Now here's the, the catalase and the explanation. The alcohol dehydrogenase, okay, and the production, uh, you know, and then acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. We've talked through that already. Now he's actually using a magnesium strip, um, kind of acts as a simple fuse. Okay, it's going to be safer at a distance. We assume that hydrogen and oxygen were both produced. And we know that hydrogen can be very flammable. And there it goes. The hydrogen combusts. The hydrogen combusts with the um, with the oxygen present. And actually, if you if you can look closely, there's actually some little popping effects because hydrogen is still being produced as is oxygen, and so it's continuing to combust. This particular action will actually cook the liver. Um, so yeah, and kind of finishing up here, and it just kind of explodes. It's really quite awesome. Okay. Uh, in, in my research, uh, kind of looking at my own inquiry into the, the liver, I, I came across kind of the, what we call Kupfer cells, and, or Kupfer cells, and they are essentially the ones that are responsible for targeting the endotoxins in the blood and destroying them, uh, essentially breaking, uh, part of breaking them down. They were discovered by Carl Wilhelm von Kupfer, 
and are now known to be an immune type cell known as a macrophage. So essentially what they are, they're macrophages. Kind of like when we looked at the immune cells, macrophages were responsible for going around and kind of gobbling up those either infected cells or, or foreign bodies in the blood. Well, that's kind of what these cells do in the liver. They, they, they target endotoxins and they break them down, essentially using proteins um, like catalase and alcohol dehydrogenase and things like that, so, and then releasing the products to be, that are either more useful or to be excreted, like when, even when targeting things like ammonia, breaking it down into urea that then is excreted via the urinary tract. Okay, so Kupfer cells are kind of responsible for targeting endotoxins, or they're one of the cells anyway. Now, uh, if you have liver disease, uh, which can be caused by a variety of things like hepatitis, drugs, poison, too much alcohol, um, you can end up with cirrhosis, and which also then can lead to jaundice. Okay, and these are all very serious things. Um, you notice this man is looking awfully yellow. That is one of the symptoms, the sign of jaundice. Okay, so liver disease. Okay. Now, cirrhosis can be caused by scar tissue that forms in your liver in response to damage that occurs repeatedly over many years. Cirrhosis is not something that happens overnight. Each time your liver is injured, it tries to repair itself, but like any time you're injured, scar tissue can remain. And even when you have surgery, scar tissue it can be present. Um, over time, with a lot of scar tissue, it becomes increasing and pretty much becomes impossible for the liver to to essentially repair itself. Uh, once it gets to a certain point, the liver no longer works, and like I said, without it to perform those 500 different functions, um, your, your body will, will begin to shut down. Okay, so uh, symptoms of cirrhosis. First of all, the liver should be a nice pink organ. This is definitely not. Fatigue, you bleed easily uh, because the, the, the liver helps with blood clotting. Uh, easy bruising, again, it helps with blood clotting without the liver to facilitate you, you'll bleed easier. Uh, fluid accumulation in the abdomen because the essentially the liver can't process it. The loss of appetite, nausea, swelling in the legs, weight loss. Okay, so a lot of those things. This is what a healthy liver should look like. This is a liver that, that has cirrhosis. And it's rather disgusting. Okay, so the side by side comparison. Now, liver disease. Uh, the Center for, for Disease Control and Prevention ranks mortality related to chronic liver disease and cirrhosis as the 12th most common cause of death in the U.S. And when you think about the number of Americans, that is a significant number. Um, now, the American Association for the Study of Liver Disease actually believes that, num that number should be higher. Okay, so researchers concluded that liver disease was the 8th leading cause of death in the U.S. in 2006. All right, and... Um, Essentially, a lot of other things led to it, but ultimately, a lot of deaths caused by uh, liver malfunction or liver abuse or, or so on and so forth. Okay, so here's my, my different, uh, my different uh, sources, the American Liver Foundation, WebMD, Medline Plus, IPCH.org, which is uh, associated with Stanford, uh, and then some other ones. These are all links. And I'll be sending this presentation to you, or at least uh, giving you access to it, so that you can, if you'd like, check out these links. But I got all these. If you want to look at the presentation, all of the, um, if you look, at, click on each of the pictures, it'll actually take you to where I got those particular images. And like, if I click on this one, it actually takes you and gives you the address. So also, each picture is also linked um, in that way. Okay. All right, so needless to say, um, and I'm trying to get back to my, here we go. Okay, so thank you for, for watching this presentation on the liver. Um, this is just an explanation of the presentation I would present to my class. We would then have a handout, which will be attached in my email or on Blackboard um, to kind of walk the, it's like a pre-lab to walk the students through the liver and enzyme function and, and looking at the different things that enzymes do. And then we'll have them explore, kind of like what you saw in the video, the different, what should and shouldn't happen when we apply a liver to things like alcohol and hydrogen peroxide, and when we combine the two, the fun result. Okay, so that ends this presentation on the liver, and I will be sending this shortly to you, Professor Tucker. Thank you for watching, and have a Merry Christmas.